Hello, everybody. So this is the lecture on competition. And we're going to be, um, at first, breaking down competition into intraspecific and interspecific. So intra refers to um, competition within a species. And interspecific means between two different species. And what we can see here is here's a really good example of both intra and interspecific going on here. What we've got here is vultures going after a carcass. And um, actually, there's a couple species of vultures in here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, these are African vultures. I'm not sure what the carcass is, but um, these vultures are certainly competing with each other over who can get the most meat, basically. Okay, And this crow is actually really smart. And what he's doing is pulling on the tail feathers of these vultures and actually getting vultures to fight each other and um, then the crow can in, while basically while the vultures are worrying and fighting each other the crow can get in a couple nibbles and get some of that um, some of that carcass it's a pretty cool strategy to see how this intra and interspecific competition are playing out together basically at the same time so what is competition, right? Well, I think we have a general idea that we know that competition is, you know, two things, two things going after the, the same resource, okay? And the way we define this in community ecology is a negative association between two species. Basically, what we see is when you have two species, when the abundance of one increases, for it to be competition, then the, uh, the uh, abundance of the other species needs to decrease. So an increase in abundance of one decreases something in the other, whether that's fitness, population size, body size, growth rates, how many of those individuals are surviving. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Um, and, you know, while intraspecific, these two hippos fighting over territory or something, is is very interesting and very relevant. We won't really talk about that all that much. We're going to be spending most of the time thinking about interspecific competition. So uh, interspecific competition can be broken down into two types. Um, interference competition and exploitative competition. So interference is the direct denial of resource capture of another species. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, think about, uh, let's say, me and you are sitting down at the table over a plate of donuts. Now, if I punch you in the face really hard, um, you're going to be worrying about getting punched again or recovering from being punched. And you're not going to be able to eat any donuts, and I can eat all of the donuts. So it's an aggressive behavior that one species does to the other. Um, you know, this can be chasing someone are chasing another species away from a resource. Uh, maybe that resource is a territory, so like space where that organism is living. Um, here's an example of chemical interference. This here is a black walnut tree that's releasing a chemical called jugalone, which um, kills other plants around it. And then, so basically all the nutrients in the soil and all the, the light that would hit this area is going to be only be able to use by be used by this black walnut tree. So that's um, interference competition is basically being mean to another species so that you can have the resource all to yourself. The exploitative is different. It's the indirect competition through depleted depletion of shared resources. Now that would be um, think about uh, me and you sitting down at a table again uh, over a plate of donuts. Now, if you were at the table by yourself, you would be able to take your time and eat all the donuts. But since I'm sitting down there at the table with you, you all of a sudden need to eat really fast if your goal is to get the most donuts, right? Um, and since I'm there, I'm going to, let's say we're equal, um, you know, equally fast at eating donuts. Um, you're at max only going to get half the donuts, right? Um, but what if I have, you know, a bigger mouth than you, some different adaptation? Maybe I'm a species that can eat donuts faster than you. 
So the traits of an organism, the adaptations that they have, um, might allow you know me to eat the donuts faster than you. So maybe these gray squirrels and these red squirrels. Gray squirrels are like uh, are slightly bigger. Maybe they're able to eat the nuts in the the, the acorns at the oak tree faster than um, than the little red squirrels. So we might see that there's some sort of competition between these gray and red squirrels. And while the gray squirrels and the red squirrels might be just sitting next to each other nicely eating all the acorns, um, they, they're they still competing over, over that shared resource. Because, you know, if the gray squirrel wasn't there, all of that, all of those acorns would be there for the, um, for the red squirrel, right? So, um, we can further break this down into um, other sorts of competition, competition mechanisms. So um, Thomas Schoner wrote a paper in 1983 and kind of laid out these competition mechanisms. Now, I actually don't like these, but um, they're used relatively common. Um, and it does, I guess, show um, different ways in which different organisms compete. But really, realistically, you can think of most of these in that the context of uh, interference and exploitative competition. So let's go through these consumption, preemption, overgrowth, chemical interaction, territoriality, and encounter competition. So uh, the first one, consumption competition, is it, it's essentially this um, exploitative competition in its simplest form, where one species inhibits the growth of another or the fitness of another or the abundance of another by consuming that shared resource. Maybe just part of it, maybe the majority of it. But when two species are consuming the same resource, they're going to be competing over it, right? So this is, yeah, simple, just pretty much exploitative competition. The second one is preemption competition. Um, and uh, realistically, this is, again, just cons uh, exploitative competition for physical resources, okay? Um, the, the key for this is that um, we, we, we see this with sessile organisms a lot and organisms that can't move, and it's where occupying a physical resource, so generally space here, uh, makes it unavailable to another species. Okay, so right here, what we've got is some gooseneck barnacles over here, some normal barnacles, and encrusting barnacles right in here, and then some bivalves, some some mussels there. Um, and you know, all of these organisms. Let's leave out the predator here, but the um, the barnacles, the gooseneck barnacles, and the mussels are competing over this physical, this space here, okay? And um, when one organism goes there, they, they're going to be competing. Um, and potentially, at least uh, what, what we see is that the, um, the mussels here are the superior competitor. Basically, in the absence of predation, they will take over these areas and really um, decrease the diversity, right? We've talked about this with uh, the keystone species, uh, 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 the, the pain work, right? Um, so, um, but really you can say, think of this as just this exploitative competition, but just for a physical resource, and that is space. The next one, overgrowth competition. Um, this is really just um, organisms that um, are doing interference competition in like a non-moving manner, okay? So um, this was one type of competition that kind of straddles between exploitative and interference. Um, so it's, it's, it's when... Um, one species inhibits access to important resources. So example along the exploitative lines is um, the interception of light in a forest. So we've got a forest here, right? Kind of pretty dark forest. It looks like lots of trees growing up above. 
And um, those trees, what they're going to be doing is they're literally growing over the top of this understory, these understory plants, right? And you can see there's really not that much growing underneath these plants because it is so dark under here. Um, and so it's exploitative because there's no real like um, aggressive interactions that the trees aren't purposely killing or um, inhibiting the, the, the growth of plants down here. It's just that they don't get any light, right? So the, the light is soaked up before it even hits here. But there are examples of overgrowth competition that you could consider along the lines of those interference in the, in the interference category. So a lot of marine encrusting organisms, these are like barnacles, bryozoans, um, sponges. And as they kind of like grow and spread, oftentimes they'll kind of grow, literally grow over the top of other organisms, which, um, you know, if you're a filter feeding organism and you have something growing over the top of you, you're not going to be able to filter in that, um, that food. Um, you might not have enough oxygen, certainly not light if you're a photosynthetic organism. So um, there, there are examples of overgrowth competition where you would more put it in that um, interference kind of category. Now, territorial competition is, I kind of just consider this overgrowth competition in animals, right? Where um, the aggressive behavioral exclusion of other species from units of space. So, um, you know, a perfect example is these lions and these hyenas, right? So lions and hyenas don't like to be around each other. Um, uh, hyenas get a bad rap for being these, like, you know, Thieves that steal the lion's kill. Um, there's plenty of times that hyenas will make their own kills, uh, but you know they often they often will try to steal a lion's kill, and lions will not not tolerate the presence of hyenas around for sure. But this is still can be uh, this isn't just with predators; it can be common with um, herbivores too. So you know this little deer is getting scared because a moose is charging after it. And there's certainly a size difference here. Um, that moose is going to win this competition. So yeah, territorial competition, just kind of overgrowth competition in, in animals where they don't allow another species to be in their space. Chemical competition. Um, this is most common in plants. It's called allelopathy, where the plants will uh, produce some sort of chemical growth inhibitor. Um, might be a toxin. So we talked a little bit that the black walnut trees are doing this. Um, but they, they kill other species. So um, you can oftentimes have like areas um, that just have a single species growing in it and a bunch of bare ground underneath. That there's bare ground here because there's those toxins in those soils. You know, not toxins that our uh, people necessarily will react to, uh, but um, it kills everything else so that all those resources, all the light, all the um, all of the nutrients in the soil are for that one species alone. Now, uh, another example is. Um, the, the fungus that makes penicillin, okay? The reason that they have penicillin is so that the fungus has a competitive advantage over bacteria. Bacteria grow faster. Bacteria are better able to um, eat up, in this case, uh, decaying fruit. Um, but what the, the penicillin, the, the fungus that makes penicillin, what it does is it starts growing and then it secretes an antibiotic. And those bacteria will get um, eliminated by that antibiotic. And then the whole orange in this case is able to be um, eaten, decomposed just by the fungus. Um, so this uh, fungus competition competing with bacteria um, is relatively common, and we've actually found a decent number of antibiotics that way. But um, chemical competition is relatively rare with animals. Now, you might think, well, there's plenty of examples where um, animals have chemicals, right? Think about a skunk, think about a bombardier beetle. Um, 
yes, but most of those types of chemicals that we see in the animals are for anti-predator things. They don't want, um, that's relatively common where there's like poisonous things. Um, but for competition purposes, it is relatively rare. I can really only think of two examples. Um, I'm sure there's more examples out there, but this is a wolverine, right? Uh, not very many left in the United States, at least in the lower 48, but they're relatively common in Alaska and Canada. And they're this predatory, predator animal, you know, a little bit bigger than a badger. Um, and <coughs> what they do is when they make a kill, they spray um, their urine all over it. And it's this really musky smell that keeps away everything else. So they're using chemicals so that they can compete, inhibit um, other species from eating their kill. Another example is... Um, maggots on a carcass. Maggots on a carcass will also produce antibiotics that uh, prevent bacteria uh, from growing there. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, doctors can at times use uh, maggots in, in like wounds that like really bad um, gangrenous wounds. They'll, um, the maggots will eat all the dead flesh and then excrete this antibiotic. And stop, and you'll be able to heal faster while you're actually all that dead flesh is getting eaten by maggots because um, it inhibits the bacteria from growing in that that wound. So um, yeah, chemical competition competition again is where you have one organism secreting some kind of chemical that inhibits or kills the other species so that they can't compete as much. Encounter competition. Encounter competition is really, um, I don't know, I don't find it all that interesting, but um, what it is, is, well, maybe I'll give an example. So what we see, these here are aphids on a plant, and then we have um, parasitoid wasp, and you can actually see this wasp come in and sting um, it, and it's ovipositing eggs. Um, putting eggs into the aphid that will eventually eat it from the inside out. Um, and what, what we would generally see is if there was another species of parasitoid wasp that, you know, came in and saw that there was a parasitoid already, this wasp here, and they might just fly away from each other because they basically don't want to be near each other, right? If, if this wasp puts eggs in, you know, most of these aphids, the, another wasp coming in is not going to want to do that because then those eggs will have to, con those larvae that hatch inside the aphids will have to compete with one another. So what we see is that um, it's a non-territorial encounter that results in negative effects on the interacting individuals, right? So wasps don't have any territory uh, or coming in um, Think about like an emergency area. You know, they're relatively like that moves like they're maybe they're kind of away from each other, but they don't want to be near each other. Yeah, they can um, basically take time away, take the time away from whatever they're doing, and that's because fitness for a short of time. So when we see these um, different different types of uh, interactions, what we can see is uh, th these uh, chemical and encounter competitions are examples of interference. Consumption and preemption are exploitative, whereas the territorial, we can kind of think as either or, depending on how, um, you know, how aggressive that, that overgrowth is or how aggressive that territorial defense is. Um, they, we could consider them as interference competition or exploitative 